Hey guys, Brett Beckman here. Happy Friday. Hope you're doing something fun, maybe working and having fun, or maybe not. We are going to do a little mini replay today of Sunday's live training. And then on Sunday, we're going to do the actual whole replay. And let me kind of tell you what's going on with that. On the replay, or on the uh, uh, live training on Sunday, we looked at some cases that were tragic results from the lack of training either in vet school or after. Uh, as you know, many of us didn't get training uh, that we should. And so that's going to go through some things involving that with, with cases that we actually saw. And then following that, we introduced the International Veterinary Dentistry Institute Veterinary Dental Practitioner Program. And we had 48 spots in that for this uh, portion of the program, which is going to last anywhere from a couple months for some of you to a year. And we are going to review that whole replay with both of those things in it. And then I'm going to take uh, questions about that program. And anyone who thinks that that might be something that they want to get into, uh, Many people are um, are wondering what what this is, and essentially, it's it's a program that is training and assessment for veterinarians that are really into dentistry and want to do really well and be one of the best that they can be in practice. So we're going to be giving four veterinarians the opportunity to do that to fill up the 48 spots that we have. We'll do that live on Sunday. So if you're interested in that, make sure that you're there uh, on Sunday. That, that is likely going to be the only opportunity to get into this program. So uh, hope to see you there. And I'm going to play uh, just a, a little introduction to give you a better idea about what's going to happen on Sunday. This is the first part of the replay uh, just for a few minutes until, um, uh, until you get a general idea about what we're going to do to see if you want to be there or not. And then uh, we'll play the, the whole thing and then do the live Q&A afterwards uh, on Sunday. So one second, let me change over and uh, we'll get you to that uh, little mini section of the replay. All right, so the gist of this training is to introduce a new program and also segue into that by talking about the results that are so unfortunate from the fact that most of us did not get training in veterinary school in dentistry. Some of us did, but not all of us were that fortunate. So first of all, we're going to talk about what we do know as individuals. We'll talk about what we should know. Then I'll show you some cases where practitioners were not up to speed on dentistry by any means and resulted in a lot of suffering for the patient and for the owner as well. And then we'll talk about the program more specifically and I'll have a outline for you on what's involved with that and we'll take 48 practitioners today uh, into that program. And then we'll answer some questions uh, basically on the program itself because there's a lot of moving parts to that and I want to make sure that everybody's clear on everything and get a chance to answer questions about the program. So the first question we need to ask ourselves as practitioners since we weren't exposed in most cases to dentistry at any level that's significant either in vet school or out of vet school what what do we really know most of us, if not all of us, know how to recognize gingivitis. We know how to recognize calculus. And we know how to recognize gingival recession, all of which very possibly we learned when we got out of that school, walked into our first exam room and saw one of these posters on the wall and got familiar with it. That in literally is in some cases, the first exposure that some of our students uh, got out of vet school. The technician in many of those cases was the one that provided 
most of the exposure to dentistry for young veterinarians out of school that are just starting in, in general practice. If you did not work at a general practice previously and had exposure to dentistry, then this is likely the first contact if you didn't get that training that you uh, should have in veterinary school. So we rely on our technicians to show us the basics of periodontal care, how to chart in many cases, what to do from the standpoint of periodontal pockets with gingival curatage and root planing. And beyond cleaning and polishing in those aspects, we probably don't have much knowledge at that point. Many of us might be in that situation today. So what should we know? What is it that we need to know and need to embrace and need to have a full scope of knowledge on in order to function at a high level in practice in dentistry? One of those things is how to transition through the day and how more specifically to go from the induction phase to the recovery phase. So that's a big piece of efficiency within practices when we're talking about patients that we don't want to keep under anesthesia too long because they're small in most cases and they get cold. So being efficient and getting that patient out of anesthesia as quickly as possible is, is maybe one of the biggest things that we have that we're responsible for, if not the biggest, when we're doing dentistry procedures. We have to learn to get quick at dentistry. We have to learn to be efficient from a process standpoint. The other thing that we need to definitely do, either from a veterinary technician team standpoint, or on the veterinary side, or more specifically and preferably on the technician side, and that is being able to take full mouth radiographs quickly and efficiently. And when I'm talking about that, we're talking about eight minutes or less, preferably, or 10 minutes or less on a small dog or cat, and then on a large dog, 15 minutes or less, unless the dog is extremely large. So that's the other component that's really important. And then we also have to be able to recognize oral pathology. And there's a lot of different things that can mimic periodontal disease and a lot of things that we in practice have questions on if we don't have exposure to the potential and the knowledge base to be able to walk through differentials in our minds as we go through some of these cases. The other thing that we need to do very well and very quickly is to be able to recognize pathology radiographically. This is a great example of a tooth that has been severely. So guys, hope, uh, hope you enjoyed that preview. And what we're going to do again is meet on Sunday, give four people the chance to get into the veterinary dental practitioner program and go through the replay of that that you just saw in total and uh, just all meet and have a good time at 1 p.m. on Sunday, and that would be August 2nd plus 7 9th. <laughs> so um, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll see you guys there, and uh, in the meantime, have fun this weekend. Take care.